Hi everyone. So I am back on this rainy Saturday. Um, I didn't really plan on doing a lot today, but we went out for a little while. Um, and like I said, it was rainy and it's been rainy pretty much for the last few days. Um, but since I've been back home today, I picked up my crochet hook, trying to work on a few things. Um, I made a few, this is a beginning, um, center for the, um, squares that I had been working on for a blanket. And I'm going to show you the squares. So this is how the squares are going to look when they're finished. Minus, you know, the loose ends. But I'm going to sew them all together and um, make a blanket. And I have to do like a total of 96 squares. So I've been working on a few things. And... What I decided that I'm going to do today is I'm going to go ahead and show you all some work in progress items that I've been working on and I'm sorry, some completed projects first and then I'm going to show you some work in progress items that I've been working on. Um, I've been trying to get this video up or get it done this week, but it's been a lot of stuff going on this week and life just happens to throw you off track sometimes so um i hope you can see me and hear me pretty good oh i'm very tired so i'm gonna try not to yawn so much in this video so um all of the completed items that i have that I'm going to show you, they have been things that I've had worked up and finished for the last few weeks now, even before it started getting hot. But um, I'm going to try to get through this video as quick as I can. Um, the first thing that I have, this is a baby cardigan. I actually made it for my youngest daughter. Um, she's now 10 months old and a lot bigger than what she was when she first came home from the NICU. Um, but I did try this on her a couple weeks ago to see if she could wear it. I still have to, um, I've pretty much sewn my ends into the project. I just need to put a little glue on them and then snip the ends off. But I followed, um, a tutorial done by Yolanda Soto Lopez. That's the front there. And then this is the back. And with this particular stitch pattern, I've made a blanket out of this as well before. Um, excuse me. And it was done for a newborn. Um, so it was a lot bigger. It wasn't as small as a preemie blanket would be. But I did follow this or make this particular stitch pattern before. And so... I finally got around to trying the cardigan here. Um, the only thing different that I did was I added a couple extra rows of this stitch here. I did the three double crochet and then I did a row of the single crochet and um, the chain row there. I did like one or two rows extra and then I added a row of half double crochet around the end of the sleeve. Um, don't really have to do that. That was just something extra that I did. But I like the fact that I could roll it up still. And you can even still do that, you know, without adding all of that extra stuff I did. Um, and I love the little Pico stitches on the edging there I don't know if you can see it I can kind of turn this light a little bit I don't know how much that's gonna help but it's like little pico stitches 
there. And the yarn that I used was some discontinued Baby Echino yarn. And I want to say it's called Baby Print. That's the color because it has these lighter pastel colors in it. Um, and I still have quite a bit left, so I might do a blanket out of that yarn, you know, whatever is left. Next, I have a slouchy hat, and it's called a snowfall hat. There is a tutorial um, on this hat as well, and I forget the designer's name. Um, but the yarn that I use. The gray yarn is some mill-in yarn that I purchased years ago from AC Moore, I believe. Um, and then the blue is some Loops and Threads Impeccable um, yarn, which is called Navy. So again, like I said, this is a slouchy hat. So it will pretty much kind of sit like this on your head. And I can actually... I don't know, let me try to put it on. My hair is on a different style. So yeah. That's the way it'll sit. So I didn't do too bad on this hat, being that it was my first time making it. Um, but I did see a few spots where I kind of messed up. Well, I'm not gonna say I messed up, but I could see where I carried my yarn at. Um, I think there was one spot that I I did actually mess up at. I ended up adding my gray yarn in like a stitch too early. <laughs> so, and it's like right there. And I should have um, did my blue there instead. So, I had two gray stitches that are a little bit too close together. But overall, I think I did a pretty good job on the hat itself. Um, the actual pattern did have like a fur pom-pom or the tutorial. But I just did the gray, I did the pom-pom, um, I'm sorry, with the gray mill in yarn. I haven't really trimmed anything yet because I've been trying to do this video off and on and doing other things too i hadn't even thought of cleaning up my pom-pom but what i do want to do eventually i saw a video on facebook on how to make your own fur pom-pom so i want to eventually try to make my own if not um i would just order them i have gone online um to amazon the Lion Brand website and also to the Joanne website and I saw the fur pom-poms on there as well so I don't really know which direction I'm gonna go right now but uh, whenever I decide you know I'll choose one or the other um, that way I'll have some fur pom-poms here and whenever I make hats I can just put one on or I can choose to just make my pom-poms out of the yarn. Um, the next hat that I have, this is, I don't know how many of you are familiar or still into um, Super Mario Brothers, but my three-year-old, she loves playing the video game. And she plays it like she's been here before and she knows all about it. So, and she, you know, sometimes she has a big imagination. Um, so whenever she's watching TV or something like that, she'll pretend she's some character or something like that off of TV. So I ended up, um, and even off the video game, she calls me Princess Peach. And sometimes I'm Bowser. Sometimes she's Bowser. Sometimes she's Mario or Luigi um, or Toad. So, I ended up making her this little hat. It is supposed to be Toad um, off of the Super Mario Brothers game. Um, 
I crocheted the eyes as best as I could. I did not follow a pattern, honestly. I just kind of went off the top of my head um, to do the eyes. But the eyes were supposed to be um, made with felt and then glued on. But like I said, I just did the eyes because, you know, crocheted them because I didn't have anything else to do. I didn't have any felt. And... I certainly did not feel like going to the store to buy felt. Um, I could have because it's pretty cheap. It's, you know, not that big of a deal, but yeah. But my issue that I had is here. I should have slid this circle over just a little bit more because it's not even. See, it's closer on this side than it is right there. But, you know, oh well. Um, and I should have done a pink hat instead. But green is what I picked out. Because I had some, um, this is actually all the yarn that I used was some Karen Wintuck yarn. That was given to me. And I believe it's been discontinued. Like, it is a much older yarn. I've never seen it really. Um, but yeah, the green was pretty much the first thing that I picked out because I just wanted to try to do something at first, but she seemed to like the, um, like the hat whenever she's playing the game or whatnot. This is what she puts on. Um, I don't really let her wear it out because it's pretty hot. So, this is her little character hat. Um, and she's been asking me to make some other things, too, from some other movies or shows she's seen. And, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I have also got here a ribbed single crochet hat this is a pattern that i found off of the lion brand website this too is supposed to have a fur pom-pom as well but it doesn't and the yarn i want to say is called oh gosh i just <laughs> forgot the name of it um is it tweed stripes or something like that i think that's the name of it but it has like this ombre kind of effect so it's lighter and then it gradually gets darker then it gets lighter again you know and it's a bulky weight yarn i think next time if i was to make this pattern again i'll i would probably personally just for me now I would probably add in a few extra rows, um, I'm sorry, a few extra stitches of, um, you know, for the chain, um, just so I could have more of the brim and the hat will be a little bit longer. That's just me because this is like, it's more, I'm not going to say it's, it's not too fitted. But I know for me, I would like to have just a little bit more um, room there for a brim. But overall, it's fine. But yeah. So I got that. And then I have here this hat. And I'm going to actually try this on. Normally... You know, when I'm making something for somebody else, I try not to try it on myself. But this is for a family member, and I actually want to see how it fits. So, I'm trying not to mess my hair up too much. Okay, so it fits fine on me. I thought this part right here was going to be a little too much um, because I did a few extra rows um, 
when I got to the top of the hat before I actually decreased. So this is the hat up close, if you can see. The brim is made long enough so that you can turn it upward or fold it, I should say. Um, and I will be washing this as well too. So this was requested of me to make a lime green and black hat and scarf set. Um, the way the, let me see, I'm going to pull out my snowfall hat that I made. So the way the gray falls in, in this hat here, but it's kind of, you know, spaced out more. This is actually how this hat was supposed to be. So I actually followed a pattern from the Lion Brand website. And I want to say the original pattern was called Chance of Flurries. So I realized when I started my second row of the, um, after I did my first two rows. So after I did this row and then there's a one row of just green plain green and then when I started this row the third one um, for the body of the hat I realized that I had already added my um, black in and it was pretty much following or on top of my previous um, two rows when I should have did a few stitches and then added in my um, black if that makes any sense but I was only like a few stitches into it. So, you know, it didn't really bother me that much. I was just like, you know, I'll try it and see how it looks. But I have shown this to my family member. Um, and she liked it. She doesn't have to know that I actually did something different <laughs> to it. Um, and I've always wanted to kind of work with like fair iron knitting and learning how to carry my yarn and things like that. So this gave me a good excuse to try that. Um, so this is the inside of the hat. It's, I don't know, it's not really, I know to me, it's not really too appealing to the eyes. But I don't know. Then again, it is when I look at it. Like, I don't know. <laughs> but, um... I think I did pretty good carrying my yarn and um then that's the center. I'm not gonna put a pom pom on it. And as you can see, I did not continue on. I was gonna continue with the pattern, um, alternating my green and black and things like that, but I just decided to finish the hat off with just plain green. Um I think my three-year-old is trying to come in because I hear her at the door. <laughs> um, she's supposed to be in there with her dad. She didn't want to lay down and take a nap, so I told her to stay in there for now until I finish doing what I'm doing. Um, and then I'm going to show you all the scarf when I get to it. Because I am doing something. I'm still continuing on with the same pattern sequence. But I am doing something a little different with it. So I will show you the scarf when I get to it. But this is the hat. Um, and this, um, the green is Rare Heart Super Saver. And the black is the Mainstay yarn. Um, and then next I have this, um, it's like a bun cover. And it came out of this book here. I've had this book for a few years now. Like, I've been pretty much crocheting and knitting since like 2009, 2010. And I want to say probably about that first or second year after I learned how to like really crochet and knit, I purchased this book, but I never made anything out of it. This is my first time making something out of this book. 
Um, so it's called the Kinky Reggae. Um, so yeah, it's like a bun holder there. But what I was really going for was something like that. So I'm going to have to recreate this again and see um, what I missed or what I need to do to make it bigger. Um, Cause I really do want to make, you know, something that fits over the whole entire head pretty much. So again, this is how it would look, the one that I made in that picture there. So if you had like dreadlocks or if you had just any type of like long braids or something like that. So, and it has elastic in the, um, at the bottom of it or at the base of it, um, so that it will allow, you know, room for stretching depending on how, you know, much hair you may have to put in it. Um, and this is. Some of that middle end yarn, the gray, and then the um, blue impeccable yarn, the navy blue. And my elastic is actually white. It's the only thing that I had. Um, you can probably see it as I'm stretching it. But I have also been on the look for um, some colored elastic as well. So that, you know, if I do make something like that again... I will have you know the matching elastic to go along with it so that it can kind of you know um pretty much disguise you know itself in there um or i can kind of disguise the elastic i should say y'all have to forgive me sometimes what i'm thinking doesn't always come out <laughs> And I don't know why that's so. Um, and then I have this hat here that I made. And if you can take a really, really close look, I have two different things going on with it. And I'm really proud of myself for making this again because there's kind of like a story behind this. Um, this is a written pattern that I found on Rowry. And I found it a few years ago when I first started knitting and crocheting. Um, when I thought I was at the point where I was like really, really good. So, and I was still learning how to like read patterns and things like that. So like the first two or three years, like I felt like I didn't really understand a whole lot behind reading patterns and you know it will take a any time you start something sometimes it may take you longer than others to like really you know get the hang of things so um I crochet the hats before the the center of it anyways and I never made it past I want to say this row here, um, I never really made it past that point. I don't know what I did, but it seemed like every time I got to that point, and I would take it out every couple of times or whatever, and it just seemed like the work kept curling up on me and things like that. So I never went back to the pattern again. Um, a few weeks ago, I came back across that pattern and mind you, it's been since, you know, I first started learning how to properly read patterns and knit and crochet and things like that. Um, a few weeks ago, I went back to this pattern again because I said, okay, let me try this. Um, because I was at a point where I was just like, you know, 
I'm about to give up on knitting and crocheting because I don't think I'm just, you know, I'm not going to get it. Like, I had it in me to, you know, do, you know, the work, but it just wasn't coming out. You know, it wasn't, you know, showing <laughs> pretty much. And I kept telling myself, I know I can do this. And so I was just like, you know, I'll take a break and then I'll come back to it. But I never went back to it after that. So after, you know, time went by, like I said, a few weeks ago, I attempted it again. And I got past that point. I knocked it out with no problems. Um, And even when it came to me switching and picking up the stitches, you know, from where I left off with the crocheting part of it, it was no problem at all. Um, I wore this hat to work one day, and this was all when it, you know, was still cold out. And I got a lot of compliments on it. So I would definitely be making more of these, doing different colors. Um, hopefully, hopefully you can see the back of it. But it's a slouchy hat. It's called the combination hat, um, and I use the Red Heart with Love, I believe. I think that's what I use um, for this, and I like this pattern so much that I decided to kind of make my own, but not really following this particular written pattern. I did use some of the stitches as far as well pretty much the double crochet stitch but I switched it up like each row sorry switched it up each row you know doing different things now this hat does use treble crochet on that row um, but I did not add any treble crochet in this one um, but what I have found this is the one that I did and I wanted the center of mine to be more open than this one was. So I don't know. I'm going to ask you guys to um, rate my hat <laughs> and let me know what you think. So this is the back of it. And it's not as slouchy as this hat is. I don't think it is anyway um so the sides of the hat here as you can see it is single crochet and I actually like how the single crochet kind of made this hat look I did some decreasing and things like that in certain rows um and again I added that open stitch pattern picked up some stitches with my knitting needle the only thing different that I think I would do to it would be for the brim I probably should have used like a 10 US size 10 um, knitting needle or 10 and a half or so probably like a nine and a half even um, but I used a size 8 knitting needle to pick up and knit my brim but I probably should have used a bigger size. So, and I say that because when I put it on, I'm trying to make sure I find the right spot for the back. Okay. So when I put it on, I don't really have, you know, a lot of stretch. So, if I really want this to kind of fit more like a slouchy hat, I have to kind of push it back a little bit more. But, I, overall, I think I did pretty good with it. Um, and then, you know, I can even wear it like so. If I had my hair, you know, flat ironed or wore it straight, I could wear it like this with no problem so um will i try to remake this one again 
I do. Um, I definitely need to actually sit down because I did not write anything down. And that's probably like the first mistake that I could probably make. Um, if I want to try to design something myself or try to remake another item, you know, and do something different with it, I probably should take note of what I do. So, <clears throat> whenever I get the time and motivation to redo this again, I will definitely take note of what I did and um, see if I get different results or you know if any changes I make will it make the pattern better so like I said this was all pretty much done with no written pattern um, just wanted to kind of do something different and see what I could come out with because I don't really design patterns or anything like that but I wanted to try it <laughs> um so I think that's pretty much it for all of my completed projects so now moving on to my work in progress item um I have quite a bit actually um more than what I'm actually going to show but I'm just going to show you all the things that I have been trying to work on these last few weeks. So, basically, um, this first item that I want to share with you, I'm using Craftsmart Value yarn, and it's called Sangria. I don't know, hopefully you can see that. The lighting is not too good, but it's called Sangria. Um, I've had this in my stash for a while, this yarn, and I'm on my second skein of it. I had purchased two when I first bought this yarn. I don't really, I don't think I really have a lot of Craftsmart Value yarn. Everything is more so Red Heart Super Saver. So, I actually got it upside down. But this is called the Hawaiian Beach Cover Up. Again, um, I found this on Ravelry, but it's also on another site as well. Um, but I'll leave the link to Ravelry. Um, and I think there's a link to the actual website that you can find this on. But it's still in the works. It gets wider as you, you know, for each set of rows. Um, it gets wider and wider. So, um, I haven't worked on this today. I worked on it a couple days ago, actually. Or was it day before yesterday? Something like that. Um... But I like how it looks so far. And I can't wait to finish it. Um, I do want to try to finish it before I go to the beach. I am trying to plan a beach trip for June or the July. So I really want to finish this before then. Um, so hopefully I will. But I'm going to... I already know I need to go and get, I might need to go out and get another skein of yarn, but I'm going to try to use as much as I can out of this particular skein before I go and purchase more. Um, and then my next project I have is a scarf. This is one of my other scarves. I think I have... Right now, I'm working on like a total of three scarves. One was supposed to actually be a hat, but I decided to let it be a scarf. So, um, I actually love the cable look. So, um, instead of me actually using 
cable needles to create this. I'm not. And the pattern is called the mock cable scarf because you're not actually using the cable needles to create the cables. You're just using the two knitting needles. Um, I actually worked on this quite a bit. I had started this out of boredom like a month, two months ago. And I only had about that much of it made. That was it. When I picked it back up, it was probably about two or three weeks ago. Um, like I was working on it off and on, but I didn't, I would do like one or two rows and then I'll put it down. And then weeks will go by um, or days and I wouldn't pick it up. But I did not actually like really work on it until my youngest daughter went into the hospital like two or three weeks ago. And this was the only project that I had with me at the time. So I, um, she was in there for a week and, you know, off and on when I wasn't talking to doctors or trying to get rest myself, I was working on this. So, um, I've worked on it a little bit, but not much this week. So I've been bouncing, you know, back and forth. But I'm using nine, a US size nine knitting needle. And this is all Red Heart Super Savory Yarn. I want to say, I think this color is called Time or something like that. I, I forget. Um, and I lost the packaging or the label to it so I don't have that with me but hopefully I can get this done before you know it gets cold um, that way I'll have something to um, have for the winter time whether I keep it or you know whether I sell it or give it away to a family member or a close friend um, the next scarf this is the one that was supposed to be the hat. I was going to make this into a baby hat. And I decided to turn it into a scarf. Now, I've done this pattern before. Um, like I said, it was supposed to be a hat pattern. Um, and I want to say the original pattern is on the Red Heart uh, website. And the only thing that I did, the stitches are still the same the only thing that I did I took out a few stitches so that it wouldn't be so wide um, I mean it's wide enough now um, but even like when I put it in you know the ends together so it's not as wide as, as it would have been but it's wide enough that's if I was to make it, you know, into a scarf. Um, and now that I'm folding it like this, I kind of got an idea for something else. So I would definitely have to keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, I'm still going to keep this, you know, going. I don't know how long I want to make this or what I want to do exactly. I don't know if I want to make it into like one of those um, like shorter scarves or cows that can um, fasten up or anything like that, like on the sides or whatnot. Or if I just want to have it, make it into like a long scarf and maybe somehow put um, a slit or opening into it so that I can pull the other end of the scarf through it. That was my first idea. Um, so yeah, I'm not really sure. I might have to go and look at some, um, something that I could probably fasten the ends of the scarf together with. That way, you know, you can wrap it around your neck and you can kind of pull it off to the side and 
kind of hook, you know, something, you know, hook the ends together or something like that. So that was the second, you know, idea. But we'll see. Um, and I'm using the Studio Classic yarn by Nicole. And I got that from AC Moore, I believe. This is my next favorite yarn to use because it's so very soft. Like, I love Red Heart yarns. Like, well, majority of them anyways, I love Red Heart yarn. Um, but I think this one is my second favorite. It's very soft. And this is actually the whole entire stain of yarn. Um, I was starting another project with this. I think I was doing a um, baby cocoon or bunt, bunting or something like that. And I took it a loose. And you know how the skein gets flimsy. So I just bought it all up instead. So I'm put my knitting needle through here so I won't lose it. So that's one of my other work in progress items. And the lime green and black scarf that I'm working on. I'm using US size 10 knitting needles. I haven't worked on this in like two weeks, to be honest. I really haven't. Um, I don't know, something in me just, I just kind of felt like I needed a break from all the color changes. Well, not all the color changes, but um, switching the yarn and things like that. Um, so this is how it looks here. Now, the hats, I was only doing one row of the green in between my alternating row. The scarf, I'm doing two rows of green in between my alternating row. And I have my garter stitches on the sides and on the bottom. Um, so, whenever I finish this too, I have some sewing of my ends that I need to do. Um, and glue those down, you know, at some point. And I left these long because most of these, well pretty much, I think all of them, all of the ends are where I joined. I had to go back in. I had to cut my black or I had to rejoin it somewhere. And so I'm trying my best to avoid having to cut my yarn and rejoin it. Because um, I don't want to, you know, create a mess in the end. So, yep, that's what I have so far for the um, scarf here that I'm making and what I did I took as much black as I felt like I'm you know need for this out of my skein I still have more of that mainstay yarn and the black and I just bought you know, took enough off and balled it up so that I won't have to worry about pulling from, you know, two different skeins of yarn. And what I do want to invest in eventually are those little, um, I forget what they call them, but you can wind your yarn on them, like yarn cards or something like that. Um, I think that's similar to what I've seen or what they call them and you know like I said that way I don't have to worry about loose you know ends or like the bobbins or something um, if you're familiar with knitting or doing a lot of color changes you know what I'm talking about <laughs> so, And then I've already shown you the squares 
that I've been working on. And like I said, these are going to be um, sewn together and made into a baby blanket. Um, let's see what I got going on. Okay. And these, I actually started this project the second to last time my youngest daughter went to the hospital. Um, this is what I was working on. And I made all of these squares while she was in there. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I made nine squares while she was in there. So I've just started five more centerpieces. So I still have a way to go, a ways to go before I reach 96. And I know a lot of people probably don't like doing granny squares. I was like that at first. I hated doing granny squares, especially small, or I'm not going to say small, but um, I mean, they're small enough, but um. If it's this size right here, I don't mind doing, but if I have to do a lot of these size squares and sew them together, count me out. But this size and bigger, I'm okay with doing. Um, but yeah, I mostly try to do like one big square if I'm making a blanket or whatnot. Um... I have, I know I have one rectangular granny square blanket that I've started like three, four years ago and it's still in my stash. So I've been, I've actually worked on that some, but yeah, hopefully I can get this finished up soon. Um, cause I really do, I'm ready to put this together and I'm also kind of rethinking if. I should add another color to the center um, because this is supposed to kind of represent like a flower um, this square is and I forget it was out of a book that I had or that I have and um, I forget the name of the actual pattern and I found the book today and I left it in the other room but all of my squares so far, they just have the yellow center um, to them. But I was thinking about doing like pink. Um, doing pink or either like a lavender type color or so. But I think for now, I'm just going to stick with the yellow. And this is all um, big baby is big twist baby yarn <clears throat> and i'm just keeping all of my squares and stuff in this big two gallon ziploc bag um next i have another baby blanket that i actually forgot i had this in my stash i have a container that i keep all my work in progress items in and i was just going through it when um well prior to us moving into our new spot i was going through that um container and i forgot all about this blanket and i had like quite a bit of it made um i remember i think i had went on vacation or something and i had bought some yarn um while i was out of town and you know during my stay you know, when I wasn't out trying to enjoy myself and relax, um, I was, I had started this particular pattern and it's Lion Brand pattern. Um, and I forget the name of it, but it's like a stack shell blanket and it has a pretty good amount of length on it, um, as far as width. So I still have a ways to go, but I'm using that one, um, 
this is the original skein and it's the pound of love um yarn so i have two more skeins of this but i have a pink and a lavender and then i have this off-white or cream color i think i purchased this on sale when i got it too um so i've been busy but not busy and I was actually hoping like two weeks ago I was going to finish this, but it did not happen. I had posted a picture on a group that I'm in saying it was going to be my weekend project. That weekend was not really a weekend that I had intended for it to be because I ended up doing something else after that. So... Last but not least, this is a um, puff stitch hat. Um, this is pretty much the remaining yarn that I have from that Karen one pound skein of the yarn that I had purchased a while ago. And I've made a couple different things from that one skein of yarn. Um... And I probably will still have enough to make another project out of once I'm finished this hat. But this is the hat that I'm working on. Um, and I'm going to show you. I don't know if it was from... From when I joined my... Um, when I picked up my stitches... Because I had to make the brim of the hat first. But you see how you have like those little open spaces there. They're okay but they are bothering me. Like, So what I'm going to do when I finish this. I'm just going to take some yarn. Or maybe if I have some um, thread that I can find. I'm going to sew that it's the same color of this yarn. I'm going to sew that part together. Um, I don't know why it created that little space there. That's probably how it's supposed to look, but I don't know. I just see it in a few spots, so I probably did something wrong when I was crocheting. But yeah, I'm just going to take either like I said this same yarn and probably or either take some thread that's close to this yarn and just sew those little spots together and hopefully it won't make the hat look too bad it was just something I noticed kind of after the fact but I was just like oh well you know you can always kind of improvise um so yeah, like I said, this was pretty much the last thing that I am going to be working on um, or that I'm showing for today. Um, so for the rest of the evening, I am going to actually finish this hat because I am almost finished with it. Um, I don't have but a few more rows to go and then I just have to sew everything together. So. I want to work on this, probably pop a movie in. I was going to lay down and try to get a nap because I've been up since 3.30 or 4 o'clock this morning with my youngest daughter. And I don't know why, but it's like, and I swear she wakes up every day um, between that time. And it's like she got a job she got to go to or something. And she did not go to sleep until, we did not go back to sleep until like 4.30, 5 o'clock, I think. She stayed up for a little while um, or so. And then she wanted to sleep all day when we went out. And I think she's sleeping now. So that's how she does. And of course, I know some of her sleeping comes from her medication that we have to give her, but... 
if I don't wake her up, she's going to sleep. And then she'll keep us up at night, majority of the time. But, yeah. Um, thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed me sharing my projects that I have completed and things that I'm working on. Um, I do want to, at some point in time, I want to do another What's in My Craft Bag video. And I actually need to go back through my stash again. Um, my husband did, I will say this, and I don't know if I have mentioned it before, but um, one of my daughter's hospital visits, my husband, while we were in the hospital, he, um, and this was after we moved into our new spot, he went and he purchased like these, um, heavy duty um shells or whatnot they're like the plastic heavy duty shells and he bought a lot of the um cues here and these were actually on sale from like christmas or whatnot um when he bought these so i have a lot of the a lot of these here with the reindeers and these are the ones that you know you can play around with the sequins and it creates a different picture or the same picture, but it's just in a different color setting or pattern, I should say. So he bought a few of those. I have some that have like the snowflake on them. Um, some that are, that have like a chevron pattern going. Um... But he put all of my yarn into these and projects that I had made and things like that. Because um, I had everything in like a big box. And I know that box was in a way. Lord knows I don't. Um, I know it was like <laughs> hard to get around. And not only like did I have just one big box, but I had like three or four boxes. Probably a little bit more of nothing but things I've made over the years and yarn that I've purchased and things like that not forgetting you know the bags that I already had I had like two or three project bags um and things like that so um right now like when i do look for yarn like most of the time i have to go through and kind of look through all of these cubes and see what is what because i don't know exactly what has actually been put in them um so i will probably go through and kind of reorganize things and try to get things out that i was going to either get rid of or maybe sell um, I'm still in the process of, um, trying to figure out this whole Etsy shop thing. I do want to eventually open up one. I'm still trying to figure out a good name that I would really like. And also, um, pricing my items and stuff. I've used different, um, formulas. And I've compared, I've gone to other Etsy shop um, competitors or sellers um, just to kind of compare and see if what I would want to charge for an item is pretty much, you know, what they are charging or around the price that they're charging. Um, so, yeah, it's just. You know, I'm not in any hurry, but like I said, I do eventually want to, you know, go that route and, you know, get my own little shop. I'm just trying to focus on one thing at a time right now because I got a lot of stuff going on, um, especially with my little one, so... I don't want to jump right in and do a whole lot of stuff and 
you know, have to come right back out of it or change something. So I just kind of, you know, take it one day at a time and just trying to perfect my craft and, you know, just doing things at my own pace right now. I mean, like I said, it's, it's no need to rush. I know for me anyways, it's no need to rush to do this because if I do something, I want to make sure that it's done right and things like that. Um, so yeah, but again, I do appreciate you all watching um, and letting me share my handmade items with you projects that I may make from online so yeah um, hopefully before summer is out I will be able to have everything organized and go through all of my things um, and get those videos out because like I said that's something that I do want to do is show my project bags and how I store my yarn or whatnot. I know I've done one before, but I would just like to do it again to show, you know, updated version or way of me showing my yarn. Um, storing my yarn, I'm sorry. So I'm hoping that it's not going to rain anymore today either. I mean, not that I'm going to be outside anymore because I'm done with outside today. <laughs> um, but it just kind of sucks. I want the sun to be out. It's not as, you know, bright as it would be if the sun was out. But, oh well. So... I will see you guys next go around and hopefully I will have some of these projects completed by the time um, I make another video so you all have a blessed day or a blessed night um, you know whatever time you're watching this and I will see you guys soon